Hello everyone, welcome to my newest video. My name is Bart Coppens and I was invited in Brazil to study insects and do entomology work. This is my light trap and this light trap attracts a lot of insects. In particular it will attract moths hopefully. I'm here to help the conservation of moths I make a list of the local species that I can find. And tonight, here in the Atlantic Rainforest in Brazil, in collaboration with Regua, I am going to show you whatever shows up tonight to my insect trap. Let's get started, I suppose. Currently very early in the night and typically the, the big moths like the huge hog moths in Saturnia they arrive late. So the first what we see is a, a wave of tiny micro lepidopterans. These are very small moths and also some stuff like flies. It's normal. The earliest moth to arrive is usually a wave of small micro lepidopterans. But it's a good sign, it means the big moths arrive later if there's so much activity. I'm mainly after moths, but one of the things that you'll commonly find here is cicadas. Calm down buddy. I'm not going to hurt you. I don't know much about cicadas, but if you light trap in the tropics, you can expect to see them as well. Bye! I'm not completely alone here in Brazil. I brought a good friend with me, it's called Beer. Itaipava, Brazilian beer. Ah, works for me. Yep. Don't drink and drive, kids, and drink responsibly. That's right. Let's wait. And see what shows up. Alright, just found a cute hog moth. This hog moth species is very common here. It's an Irene species, and most people from this area have seen it before. It's even classified as a pest, because this species uh, likes to lay eggs on the cassava crops here in the area. And in one night you can find many of these, dozens of them. You have the typical orange rusty hindwings, oops it flew away. Now this species is so common here. I'm not even going to take it for my research because it's, it's basically a pest. They're so abundant here and they've been studied thoroughly. Like here on the sheet, there's already a second one. Sometimes you can get a dozen of these in one night. Alright, so at this point there's just a whole cloud of tiny little moths. And sometimes we can see a hard moth from the genus Irinis. Well, tonight is early. It's currently around 7 o'clock. It's gonna get wild tonight, perhaps. Alright, so most of my YouTube subscribers, they care about the big moth. They don't care about the small insect. But this one I want to show anyway. This is a small micro Lepidoptera. But what's really cool is it has this silver shiny... Can you see it? It's metallic silver. That's kind of cool, isn't it? It's like a little candy wrapper. I know it's not much, but I thought it was cute. I mean... Look at how metallic it is. It's pretty awesome, right? 
I know it's small. I know people don't care about small insects that much. But I am impressed. It's one of the shiniest moth I've seen so far. It's like a tiny piece of gold. How cute. Alright. Oh, this is a nice little moth as well. It's kind of like a coppery color on the wings. It's quite shiny. What a cute little insect. Can you see the coppery shine? It's very subtle. But it's there. You can see it. Also has like a little bit of metallic. So the night is just getting started. So the night is just getting started and I'm showing you the cool small stuff before the big Saturnids can arrive. This is a very cute one, don't you think? Very nice color. It's awkward to film it in this light, I guess. Alright ladies and gentlemen, it's time. We have the first Saturnid of the day. And it's an Automera species. Automeras are sat the Saturnids that often fly very early in the night. Let me see what time it is on my mobile phone right now. It's... It's 8 o'clock. That's too early for most Saturnids. But not for Automeras. Alrighty then. Yep. This species of Saturnid is extremely common around Regua. The species is Automerus melanops. And if you ever visit Regua, you'll see this species almost every day. Both the males and the females are very common in Regua. This is a male. Females are larger. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, Automerus melanops. I'm gonna let it go, this piece is very common, I don't need it for my research. But it's good to see Saturnids are coming. Hmm, this is an interesting one, also very shiny. As you can see. Its wings are a little bit pearlescent if you look close. Interesting species. I'm taking this one for a close-up. Alright, more Saturnids have started showing up. Believe it or not, this is a Saturnid. Nice Serato Campid meal. I'm taking it for photography and documentation. Yeah. Alright folks, it's 10 o'clock. Things are slowly heating up. A uh, lot of Saturnids have arrived, but most of them are these tiny Serato Campid meals. So uh, I'm researching Saturnids, so I'm gonna take them for photography anyway. Basically, all the Saturnids that come to my trap tonight, I'm taking them, photographing them, then releasing them back. Getting females is more rare, but getting these type of Serato Campid males, as you can see there's many of them here on the sheet. Here's another one. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, um, here's another one. So uh, you get dozens of these every night. So. Now if you're lucky you can get huge Saturnids here, but most of the Saturnids you'll catch are small like this one. Oof, 
These can be difficult to identify because there are several species. But according to my sources, it is also a Saturnidae species. Cicia crocata. If you thought that this is an ant, think again. This is a leaf hopper that mimics an ant. That's crazy, huh? Also come to light with a very large beetle. It's a nice beetle, isn't it? Maybe I should take it for a close-up. For now I'll just leave it on the sheet and when the sun come up, comes up and it's still here I'll also take it for a nice bug highlight video. So I like to document all the wildlife here. The project I'm doing here combines entomology, science and social media. So I'm also documenting any interesting stuff for YouTube just to raise awareness for Brazil and the cool insects that live here. Like if you saw it like this, you would think it was an ant, right? But the camouflage of these leaf hoppers is so insane. What? That's so crazy. No, not you. This is absolutely disgusting. This is horror. There's a Katie did here with a parasitic worm. I'm not joking you. Do you see this? Oh my god. Oh my god, this worm. It just came out of this insect. Did you see that? That's insane. That's insane. What the hell? What the hell? Holy shit. Ew. That's so sick! What the hell, dude? Oh my god! I swear! Did you saw the gigantic horsehair worm? It just came out of this thing, man! That's disgusting! This insect is probably doomed because these parasites... They consume the insects' insides before bursting out of them. So in a few days, this one is probably doomed. Oh my God. Guys, this is one of the sickest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am a man of biology and entomology. So I'm not that easily grossed out by the things that we see in nature. But seeing a parasite this size burst out of a cage like that, oh my god. That's not one of the things I expected to see in Brazil. <laughs> I need another beer. It's how I deal with this psychologically, man. Seeing stuff like that makes me so happy that I'm not an insect, you know. You have to deal with problems like that. Oh my god. I think the parasite is called a horsehair worm. Some parts of the world they can be quite common. And I believe they kill their hosts by drowning them. They can only complete their life cycle near water. Now you can hear in the background, hear some waterfalls. So maybe the insect sensed that its host was near water or in a humid area and it burst out. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's the way that um, insects get infected with the host is also when they come in contact with water. Especially bodies of water that have the worms in them. Oof, that's crazy. Let's play it again in slow motion because it's one of the craziest, most random and most disgusting moments I ever happened to film. A horsehair worm parasite bursting out of the abdomen of a katydid. Ew.
Big Moth Alert. Big Moth Alert, I have no idea what it is, it's going too fast. And it's gone. Let's hope it will come back. And let's hope it's a Saturnid. Yeah, it's big. It's going everywhere. It just landed in the grass. Somewhere, and there it goes. Oh man, I hope it stops. Let's hope it's not a black witch, because let's be honest, I've seen hundreds of those. Mm, it's flying fast. Perhaps it's time to deploy the net. Man, it's going so fast! Dude, you're crazy! What are you? <gasps> it's a Kopaksa! It's a Kopaksa! My first wild Kopaksa species! Oh my gosh! This is what we are looking for! Fantastic! Yo! In South America there's many species. So in Copaxa are silk moths you can find all over Central and South America. There's a lot of species of them, I don't know how many there are in total. But last time I checked, I believe there's like 30, maybe even 40 species of Copaxa worldwide. They can be quite beautiful, usually they are grey, purplish, brownish, but sometimes even pink. Or red. And this is the first one I've ever seen in the wild, even though I raised many species before in captivity. This is my first wild Copaxa. It's a very nice species, isn't it? very large did you see how crazy it was when it flew they fly really fast actually in the wild wow Let's see if I can capture it without hurting it. This one I'm definitely taking for my research. So people, what do I do with all the moths that I collect? The good news is no, I don't murder them, I don't kill them. All the moths I find interesting, like the Kopaksa that we just found, I put them in this cage. Tomorrow I take this cage home with me, and in my home I make close-ups, like macro photos of each of these interesting moths. And then I will try to identify them, and then I will try to build a database with pictures of all the moths that I found in Brazil. This data will be shared with other scientists and entomologists that work here. And this allows us to preserve the environment based on what species there are that live here. Now, I'm trying to help making a list of the local Saturnidae species that live here at Regua. And so far it's going well. Now, let me tell you something about moth trapping. Moth trapping is kind of like fishing, right? You never know what you're going to catch or if you're going to catch something interesting in the first place. Now, I know I'm in the tropics in Brazil. There's like, I think there's like 80 species of Saturnids in this part of Brazil. But it doesn't mean you're going to find all of them in one night. Some nights you find almost nothing of interest some nights you find a lot of interest. So it's kind of like fishing in that regard. Sometimes when you're lucky you'll have an explosion of cool moths. Some nights, sometimes you just have slow nights and where nothing interesting will show up. This depends on the weather, but also the generations of the local Saturnids, because they often come in waves. Tonight is looking like a decent night. The night is still a little bit young. Um, 
I think that right now we are almost approaching midnight. So that's when you start seeing the big Saturnid moths after midnight. It would be cool if we saw more. Like Copiopteryx, it's like a local species with very long tails. It would be very nice to see one of those. But then again, you need luck. Even in a place like Brazil, you have to be lucky to find whatever you, what you want, right? You don't see all, your, all the species here every day. It's a little bit random what can show up. But I'm happy to have the large Copaxa. I don't collect micro Lepidopterans for my research, but they do need some more respect. Like this one, it has very nice... Can you see the gold? Let's all agree that it's beautiful, isn't it? Look at the gold. Wow. If any researchers are watching this who have an affinity with micro Lepidoptera. This is the place you should go to, man. Like, if they want someone like me to research the local Saturnidae, then imagine how little we know about the local micro Lepidoptera in comparison. If huge species of moths from the Saturnidae family aren't even that well known here, well, then you can imagine how little known these small ones are. I bet some of them don't even have a scientific name. Oh, fantastic. Ooh, this is absolutely beautiful. This is not a Saturnid, it's like a, a Geometrid moth. But it's probably one of the brightest yellow Geometrids I've seen in my life so far. It's hard to see because the light kind of warps the colors here. This is fantastic. Yep. This one I am taking for a close-up. Wow. Here we get some kind of large notodontid moth. Kind of has like this tail, can you see it? That's a funny shape for a moth to have. Unfortunately, due to poor lightning, we cannot see its true colors very much. But that's okay, I'm taking it for the close up tomorrow. Right, folks. <coughs> After the big Copaxa, the night has become a little bit more quiet and I haven't seen that many big moths anymore. Hmm. Let's hope some more show up. But if not, I guess that's going to be it. Some crazy kind of an assassin bug with long antennae. I wonder if it's on the hunt for something. Whoa! Bye bye. Oh my god. Some really big ass bee just showed up. And it's not a bee that I want to mess with. Man, look at that. He keeps burning himself in the light, that's great, that's great. Probably getting more angry every second. Would be nice if it landed for a second though. Oh yikes. This is a massive bee, yo. Bruh. Look at its size. It's kind of like a scary thing, man. What? Damn. This thing is massive. Yo. 
It's a bee from hell. Damn. Whoa. Ah. Look at the size of this bee. Yo. Oh, don't kill me, please. What? It's, oh my god. It's insane. It's fascinating though. Isn't it? Oh. Here it goes again. Gee, man. It's kind of cute, eh? In a really fucked up way. Man. I wonder if it's aggressive. It can probably sting. Hello there, giant bee. Will you be my friend? Be. Haha. <laughs> You get it. it. Doesn't seem to be interested in stinging. Nor does it show signs of being aggressive, I suppose. Wow, ah, it's staring me down. I'm kinda excited over this bee, to be honest. I mean, I never seen one this huge. Wow. Yo, why do you insist? Why do you persist, Mr. Anderson? Just land somewhere, stop flying. Crazy giant bee. Wow. All right, ladies and gentlemen. It seems that Bart Coppens and the giant bee just became the best of friends. I'm not joking. It's sitting on my hand. Can you see that? I tamed the giant bee. And I'll be honest, whatever the species is, I'm very impressed because it seems to be beautiful. Look at its colors and its size. It really is a magnificent animal. Is it a good idea to handle it like this? Maybe not. I hope it doesn't decide to send me to the hospital. But wow, this is a very beautiful creature. I hope it doesn't decide to hurt me. I'm not even sure if it's capable of hurting me. Some native bees here cannot sting. But some of them definitely can. Wow. Fantastic. Look at its face. Those jaws. That hairy body. Wow. Have you ever seen a bee like this? I wonder what kind of plants it pollinates. Fantastic. This is so crazy. Wow. What a beautiful animal. I really respect it. You know? So amazing. It's just chilling there. I can't believe that it's so, so calm. Probably has nothing to fear. Huh? I mean, if you're a giant ass bee, I wouldn't be afraid of anyone either. Wow. 
All right, maybe it's the sleep deprivation, but to me, this is really a marvelous animal, yo. Like, let's be real. How often do you make friends with a giant rainforest bee? My mind is blown tonight by this creature. I was looking for moths, but I found something else that's really cool. Wow, what a fantastic animal. Don't try this at home, okay, if you're in the rainforest. Please don't handle random bees and wasps and stuff, because this uh, you can get hurt that way. But wow, fantastic, wow. Amazing. All right, folks, the sun is coming up and the night is almost over. That's right. We did get a nice turnip and a giant bee. Despite that, I was kind of hoping for more, to be honest. Maybe I'm just greedy. But I was kind of hoping for more results than this. Mm. Maybe next time. Anyway, let's check this stuff out. Well, this is the end of the night, guys. I'm slowly going to go home now, but not before uploading the close-ups that I made. Take notes, moth enthusiasts, because on this YouTube channel, I'm essentially giving away my research for free. Yes, I'm helping to research the local species of moths and I'm working on a list. But most entomologists would not openly share their findings as openly as I do on YouTube. It's even ridiculous if you think about it. Most people like to keep the discoveries for themselves because they want to make a name for themselves or because they want to compile their work before publishing it. But I, dear friends, am sharing you with you for free on my findings. Why? That's because I believe in free information. And if this helps other young entomologists get started with their passion, then I am happy. Anyway, Try moth trapping for yourself sometime and look for the species that live around you. Tonight was a bit of a mediocre night, so we didn't get as much moths as I would hope, to be honest. But at least we have a nice Kopaksa. Let's get started and show you the close-ups. Oh my god, it's a giant bee! It's a giant bee! Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, when you send Bart Coppens to the rainforest, you know he's going to return with the craziest insect videos. Including one of him holding a giant rainforest bee. When you send Bart Coppens to the rainforest, you're going to get some crazy insect videos. Such as this video of me holding a giant rainforest bee. Oh my god. Let me tell you about its biology. Handling giant bees in a rainforest? This is a very bad idea. Don't try this at home. Some of these species can probably land you in a hospital if they have a bad day. Thankfully this one right here seemed to be quite gentle, thankfully. So I took it for a nice close-up. Let's identify it. Now I'm quite bad at identifying bees, so correct me if I am mistaken. But I think this could be Xylocopa frontalis, a giant carpenter bee found almost anywhere in Brazil, and it's a vital species when it comes to pollination. In Brazil there is a number of plants that heavily rely on giant carpenter bees to pollinate them. One example is Brazil nut, or Bertoletia excelsa, although they pollinate hundreds of plants. Carpenter bees build nests in wood, they excavate nests in dead wood. As scary as these giant bees may look, they are absolutely vital for the health of the rainforest and for the people in Brazil. Native bees pollinate native crops and fruits. Pollinators are incredibly important for the environment. Carpenter bees are big and robust and they can fly very long distances in search for food. Wow, 
When you send Bart Coppens himself to the rainforest in Brazil, he's going to show you some really awesome insects, including this Copaxa he found in the Atlantic rainforest. Let me tell you about the biology of this beautiful Saturnid. Aha, this is our main prize of tonight. To be honest, I've already seen most of the moths that came to my light today. But this is the new one for me today. This right we here should be Copaxa descrescens. Based on recent DNA barcoding analysis, true Copaxa descrescens may be much more limited in its range to southeastern Brazil, Paraguay and northern Argentina, and possibly southeastern Bolivia, being replaced in other locations by similar recently described species. In Brazil, it's found in Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Parana, Santa Catarina, Sao Bento do Sul, and the Mato Grosso do Sul. The caterpillars feed on plants from the Lauraceae family, including but not limited to avocado, but also Nectandra and the Laurus. This Copaxa species seems to be semi common in the lowlands, and according to my information, this species is also found up to higher elevations, although I have yet to find them there. If this information is true, at least it seems more common in the lowlands than the highlands. Now I have good pictures of these species for my research project. That's what I wanted. I try not to overuse the word pest because it is an overused word. But pest is what these are. Erenis elo is super common in the lowlands of Brazil. And they're pretty much a pest species on cassava crops in Brazil. In fact, cassava or manioc is one of their major host plants. It turns out that there are massive fields of them being farmed in Brazil. And this moth has a massive distribution from Argentina, Paraguay and southern Brazil all the way through Central and South America, even up to the southern parts of the United States. It's possible that humans had a hand in their large distribution though, by growing their food crop cassava on a large scale. If you want to find out more about this hot moth, then let me remind you of the fact I gave this species its own episode on my channel at one point. Ooh, I didn't get this on camera, but a really nice fat hot moth arrived. It's Manu Manduca Yamnira. Apparently, this species is quite difficult to tell apart from Manduca brasiliensis, another similar species found in southeast Brazil. I hope I got the identification right. <clears throat> oh. Look, it's Automerus melanops, again. Pretty much every night these dudes show up. I'm not even sure if this species is still worth talking about since I've shown them every time. Automerus melanops is one of the most common Automerus in the lowlands of southeast Brazil, and their larvae feed on many plants in the rainforest. In a good week you can find dozens of these little fellas with their cute little eyes. Visually it is very difficult, if not impossible, to distinguish from Automerus para paramelanops, described by the shitty entomologist Brechlin and Meister from Paraguay.
Oh hey, look at that. This is a tiny little mini Saturnine moth. It's Sissia crocata, I think. This species is found in southeastern Brazil, and the moths can supposedly vary a lot in color. The caterpillars of these small moths seem to feed on Fabacia, Placiders, Acacia, and Mimosa, and possibly also Cassia. Do you recognize any of the yet unidentified moths in my video? Then you can actually help my research by identifying some of them. Some of these species did not have, uh, I did not have the time to identify them yet. Name suggestions would be very welcomed. The location is the Atlantic Rainforest in Brazil in the lowlands. Guys, I need to know, what was your favorite insect in this video? Please, write it in the comments. What was the favorite insect you saw during this moth trapping night? I'm doing a survey because I want to know what kind of insects my viewers like the most. This research will help me make more cool videos for you. Second of all, what is moth trapping and why am I doing it? Why would somebody hang up a light bulb that attracts insects? Aha! My name is Bart Coppens and I study butterflies and moths. I also have the biggest and the best YouTube channel about butterflies and moths on the internet. And I came all the way to Brazil because I want to help develop a list of the local species of butterflies and moths in the Atlantic rainforest on Brazil. But on top of that, I also want to promote the environment here on YouTube in collaboration with a natural reserve named Regua that supports my work as an entomologist in Brazil. And you know what? Every biologist who wants to study moths needs a good book. Ladies and gentlemen, Regua publishes a lot of books and today I want to show you a book that really helped me during my stay here in Brazil and to help identify many of the moths that I encountered. This book is a guide to the hawk moths of the Cerro dos Ergaos, southeastern Brazil. And it is written by my entomologist colleague and friend named Ellen Martin. Ellen has been studying the hawk moths in this part of Brazil for over 10 years by intensively moth trapping here. Wow! And in collaboration with Regua, they decided to develop a book about the local species of Sphingidae, those are the hawk moths, of this particular region in Brazil. And this is the result. Look at that. There's hundreds of pictures of hawk moths, how to identify them, and even their habitat. Look at that. This is an amazing book. And I just really want to give it a little shout out and promote it. Now, if you want to order this book, you can. You just have to go to the website of Regua. Just send them an email and tell them you are interested in the Hawk Moth book. This is not a paid promotion. I do not make money from any copies that they sell. I'm doing this out of the kindness of my heart. Why? Because Regua helped me a lot and this is me helping them in return. But also because I genuinely like this book and it is a genuine recommendation. A guide to the hawk moths of southeastern Brazil. Take a look at this. So many pictures, so many ways to identify hawk moths. Now, I know kids, we are the internet generation, all right? We find a lot of information about insects on the internet. But if you don't read books and if you don't use literature, you will never become an expert. You need good sources like this. Just a nice book recommendation. Catch you guys later. There's many more moth trapping nights coming up with rare insects in them. Bye bye. Did you know the Atlantic rainforest in Brazil is one of the most deforested rainforests in the world? That's why I came here to study insects. Over 85% has been lost to deforestation already. I came to Brazil to try and help to stop this. In collaboration with a natural reserve named Regua, we're doing reforestation and conservation. And we even have a tree nursery where we grow native trees that we plant in deforested areas. Let me talk about it to you. 
My name is Bart Coppens, a traveling entomologist on social media that studies butterflies and moths and cares about the environment. Today I came all the way from the Netherlands to Brazil to help out the restoration of the Atlantic rainforest, one of the most deforested rainforests in the world. I joined a wildlife conservation and reforestation effort named Regua. Here as a volunteer, I am helping and trying to draw awareness to this project on social media while researching the butterflies and moths in the area and showing you the coolest insects on YouTube to draw awareness for them. Behind me is a tree nursery. Can you see it? Wow! Here the volunteers are growing thousands of native plants, trees and shrubs. These trees and plants will be planted in areas that were reforested, so the forest can be restored. And hopefully these little baby trees that I am holding here will one day grow into a major rainforest and will be able to restore the environment and all the plants and animals that were once lost due to human influence. However, it is difficult for me to do this. My YouTube channel is completely permanently demonetized by YouTube and YouTube still refused to tell me why. What I do is expensive. Traveling the world is expensive and I don't make money, not a single cent from any of the videos that I upload. Therefore I want to remind you this channel is 100% crowdfunded. The donations of my fans, viewers and supporters are what enables me to travel the world, go all the way to Brazil and help with reforestation and conservation of the environment. If you like the show, if you like what I do, consider donating to my channel. There are several options available in the links in the description. There's Patreon where you can buy a subscription, there's PayPal, there's Ko-Fi, there's many ways to send me a payment. All the funds I raise online will be used for the production of more videos, for my research projects on insects and nature, or to draw attention to wildlife and conservation projects like Regua here behind me. I'd love to show you more about it on YouTube, so subscribe and check out my other videos. Of course, I'm not entitled, you don't have to give me anything, and it doesn't make you less of a viewer if you don't. I'm only reminding those who are willing and those who are able to donate. It's not an obligation, you can enjoy the stuff, of course, for free. I enjoy all your comments and viewership. This was Bart Coppens, I hope to see you again. Hope to see you next video, bye bye. I really need your help guys, my channel is demonetized and for my YouTube channel donations are the only source of income that can increase my budget. If you watch a lot of my stuff and you think it's worth supporting then please consider doing so. Last but not least, everyone can visit Regua and so can you. We accept tourists and visitors too, so check out the Regua website because you can come here too and moth trap for yourself. Bye bye!